don't get me wrong, <laughs> I, I had no intention to privilege a woman. But what can I do? Females rock. Inspire change. 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 Today I'm here to share with you uh, my very personal story. And it's, um, it's like the first time in my life ever to share it in public, so bear with me, please. Well, um, my life story would be uh, marked with three crucial turning points that dramatically changed my life. Uh, I was born 1973, and I was a normal kid, just a normal kid, quiet, shy, polite, neat and decent, that's it, nothing more, nothing less. Um, but I was a happy kid, happy by nature, and I wanted everybody around me to be happy. I was my father's first kid, and he was my first love. All what I remember about my childhood is daddy. He was a real man. He taught me how to be responsible, reliable, honest, and how to spread happiness wherever I am. Mama always reminds me when I was a kid, I took my pencil and drew a mustache, so I have a mustache like daddy. And I take my teddy bear, put it under my shirt to have this sponge, and walk like Papa's coming home. Yeah, he was a real man, and I loved him very much. And um, when I decided on, this, on studying engineering, there was that great debate in the family. Girls in the family study arts, linguistics, business, or any other non-technical stuff, but engineering was for boys only. I chose engineering, and was the first time the polite and quiet and shy Rania stands against the family's expectations and decide on engineering. That was crazy. But the only one who supported my choice was Daddy. And with Daddy's support, I did it. Actually, if you ask me now why I wanted very much to be an engineer at that time, I don't know. I only thought that being an engineer, I may develop a solution that makes people happier and their life easier. And that was the main aim. What exactly was it? I didn't know at that time. So, I graduated in 1995 in Alexandria University. I got married the same year. We moved after a, little, a nice love story, actually. And <laughs> we moved to another city that I didn't like at all. And I gave birth to my gorgeous daughter the same year. I got a job at uh, uh, the IT department of a reputable bank. The job was not that technical, important person doing the technical stuff at the bank, no. But the salary was good, so I was okay with the job. And after one year at the bank, I was transferred to another department, non-technical at all, uh, to fill in an immediate emergency, so I had to switch career. And I had to do banking work. I did well. I was quickly promoted. But this promotion actually took away another portion of my happiness because it drove me far away from the IT or the technical studies that I did. But tell you what, life was going on, not so happily, but it's okay. Until that specific day, the sudden death of my dad, April 2000. He passed away very fast, very healthy, energetic. He had a lot of unfulfilled hopes and dreams. And in six hours, he was gone. That day was an eye-opener to me. I discovered that life is too short to be not that happy as you deserve. And I disco discovered that I'm moving on very fast, very well, but actually in the wrong direction. Or at least not the direction that I dreamed of. And this was the first turning point of my life. At the age of 28, I quit the bank, got divorced, moved back to Alexandria with my four years daughter, all in one step, just as if you pressed a reset button and everything has to restart over again. And I was courage and, okay, I took my decision and I'm sure it's the right decision. Okay, give it like a couple of months and I'm sure, sure, I will find a very reputable job in the IT department or in the IT domain in general, and I'm sure that I will be able to support myself and my daughter and live among my family and old friends and be happy again and nothing I will be asking for. 
but no. For one whole year, I failed to find a job in the IT domain. What I studied back six years ago at college was already outdated. And even any fresh grad can do better than me. Besides, there was a, a big problem. I majored in communications engineering. You know what communications engineering mean in the Arab world? Communications engineering is for men only. Why? All the adverts, all the, the relevant jobs were for males only, with males only quotation. Why? Because he's a man. He's clever, he's capable, he can uh, travel frequently, he can work on site, he can stay late for night shifts. But women, no, they cannot do it. They're not able to do it. I accepted the fact, and I remember at that time, I ran out of money, totally out of money. I even had issues to pay my school, my daughter's school fees. I remember in those days, I can say how grateful I am to mama my best friend and all-time supporter. She backed me up as much as she can, but there has to be a fix, a quick fix, and no way back, no more banking. So after a while, I managed to find a trivial job in an IT department in a small logistics company outside Alexandria at 25% of the last salary I had at the bank. But to me, it was a small job, a small step that I have to take on the right road, so I took it. And at the same time, I started studying. I noticed that there was increased demand for software developers in Egypt by that time. So I studied software development at the American University in Cairo, and I got certified. And then, okay, everything is fixed back. I managed to have, to start a software development career in a very good software company. And that was the second turning point of my life. Up again. Everything is beautiful now. I have that job that I dreamed of. I enjoyed it very much. I, I love my colleagues. They love me very much. We have fun together. I was watching my daughter growing up, studying, doing sports, and having these school activities, and everything was beautiful. And one thing I have to mention that helped me a lot during this period, that my family established an NGO for assisting uh, visually disabled girls. And um, working with those girls on the ground and spending time with them helped me a lot. It gave me a lot of contentment and sense of worthiness. And it taught me persistence. As they did, I have to do. On the personal level, <laughs> it took me like seven years to get over my divorce. And at the age of 35, I got married again. And by that moment, I thought, now every aspect of my life has been beautifully fixed. I cannot ask for more. But I was wrong. Because that was the exact moment that everything fell apart again. <laughs> yes. My husband wanted me a housewife. And I wanted to be a happy wife. I wanted a meaningful life, a challenging one, full of ambitions and achievements. Marriage to me was two partners sharing hopes and thoughts, and supporting each other to achieve what they dream of. Marriage to me was not um, a title that I have to hold so that my society has to accept me, because they do not accept a divorced woman. So, uh, it was actually a strong decision. Um, and maybe if you're in contact with women in the Arab world, you can understand how hard was it. But for the moment, I thought, I never felt incomplete person before I got married again, and I will never feel incomplete person if I get a divorce again. So I made my, my mind, I made up my mind, and I followed my dreams, and that was the third turning point of my life. And it seems my destiny is, whenever I get a divorce, I, I divorce everything at the same time. So my marriage came to an end, and at the same week, my career path at the company came to an end. There were no more promotions, nothing new to learn, nothing new to do. Work became so boring, so I had to leave. And by that time, there was the uprising coming in Egypt. And the uprising in Egypt inspired me. Egypt has changed, and I have changed too. I became a stronger me. 
I became more confident, more determined, and more optimistic. I can do it. And I felt like the entrepreneur inside of me has to step out and be part of the change. So I established Itran 2013. Itran is an Arabic word that means perfection. I started Itran and I lived since ever I thought of building an IT enterprise to the moment I'm, I'm speaking to you now, the loveliest and the craziest struggle of my life. Being a woman, a single mother, building an IT enterprise in a society that does not very much appreciate IT, actually. And undeveloped infrastructure, lack of well-trained human resources, that political and economic unrest everywhere, all these challenges, besides having that intellectual teenager at home. So you finish work and go have your battle at home. But I did it. Thank God I did it. And in three years now, we were recognized as the IT consultant for the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, IT consultant for the UNESCO, United Nations. Um, I was uh, assigned by the US uh, Embassy in Egypt to speak to and mentor women entrepreneurs. Um, we shared our experiences at exhibitions and trade shows in Dubai, Taipei, Munich, Barcelona. We developed a lot of software applications, and I was really, for the first time, I understood what I had in mind 25 years back, maybe, when I was, when I was insisting on going to on studying engineering, because when you see your customers using your software and life become easier, you feel this happiness, satisfied. Thank God somebody is happier because of something you did that he make use of. And um, today, I thank God for the path I walked. I thank God for the challenges he gave me. And I thank God for the life I lived. Every mistake I did, I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud of the wrong decision I made because it made me what I am today. And I'm also proud that, thank you. thank you. I'm also proud that I'm one of few women who run private businesses in Egypt in these circumstances. Can you imagine that Egypt, who were the Egypt, the country that was once ruled by Nefertiti, Hatshepsut, Cleopatra, thousands of years ago, now we have very few number of women-led IT enterprises. Can you imagine it? But to be honest, it's not only because the government does not encourage it, or that the current situation is highly complicated and challenging for men themselves, no. But the women I speak to, they have no enough confidence that they can do it. They don't. And... Uh, Ironically, in Itran, we have like 80 to 20 female to male gender count. Yes. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I, I had no intention to privilege a woman. But what can I do? Females rock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, I hope one day I'll be able to change this culture in my country. Yeah, I hope I can do it. I dream of building a large IT hub that I can incubate fresh grads and youth who have passion for IT to empower them, to enforce the skills. And for a change, I promise to maintain a gender equality environment. <laughs> Thank you all. And remember, life is too short not to be happy. Thank you.